John Heffernan sees big things when he looks at those little tiny Lego bricks. A former software engineer and now a teacher at Williamsburg's Ann T. Dumphy School, the little plastic pieces are building blocks for an engineering class. He's a firm believer that engineering comes naturally to kids and that elementary school students should be taught its principles. What makes Legos a good place to start? Here's what he thinks. Well, I got a job in uh, Williamsburg schools about 12 years ago, and uh, they had um, a sixth grade robotics program. Lego at that time had robots, Lego robots, but only for the older students. So we did it in sixth grade, and it was wonderful. However, uh, there was a second grade teacher that was really interested, but Lego just didn't have the uh, product then. So we were really excited when Lego came out with something called Lego We Do Robotics, which went down to first grade. And I worked with that teacher, and we eventually developed, or I eventually developed a whole K-6 to robotics curriculum. Because that's one thing Lego didn't do at the time, is provide a whole uh, sequence of lessons for grade level. Yeah, and I'm excited to talk a bit more about that curriculum. But first, I wanted to mention that this year, you were named a LEGO Master Educator. And as I understand it, that program kind of offers, offers teachers a way to connect mm -hmm. and maybe learn and swap ideas. Are there things that you've learned or shared with others? Um, or maybe I should say, are there things that you've learned that you're using now or plan to use now? A lot of that is about sharing ideas. Um, so I get to my, met a lot of teachers from all over the country. And a lot of it for me too is just re-energizing uh, my own program as we, um, we tend to work as teachers a little bit in isolation. So it was great to kind of re-energize and get re-motivated to, to keep pushing and creating and inventing new things for the students. Among the things that I understand that you've invented with your students so far is a burglar device in, in a home. How does that work? So the fourth grade students have to do an open-ended engineering challenge, and they, so that means there's no one an way to do it. There's no one right answer, just like real engineering. So they have to make a model of a home with a burglar alarm in it that uses a, a distance or motion sensor to detect a minifigure burglar that comes in. And, and so then the little minifigure trips it, and then they know if they've been successful if yes, it actually trips. They, mm -hmm. It can make a noise or move a motor to do something to the burglar. Um, so some of them, kids get a little carried away, so there <laughs> could be liability issues with some of their <laughs> solutions. <laughs> it, it must be real. so exciting, though, to watch them go through that process and see how different kids tackle it. It is, and that's the great thing about open-ended challenges. There could be uh, more than one answer. Um, you'll, there's an example on one of the images I provided where... Uh, uh, the girl, um, kids program a robot, a little bee-bot, it's a little miniature uh, robot to go around an obstacle and get to the honey. So I always taught the kids to go, go up, make a turn, go up, make a turn, go up, make a turn, go up, make a turn. And that's how I thought I, that was the best way. So one time uh, this girl came in, kindergarten girl, she said, well, that's, that's really difficult. Why don't you just turn the robot at the beginning so it only has to make one turn. So I'd never thought of that. So that's the great thing about these open-ended challenges. Each team has their own solution and you could never think of these as a teacher. So it's really, but it is a different way of teaching where there's not one right answer. And so some teachers find that challenging. Yeah, I was going to say, so having one right answer as a teacher, sometimes that's, is it the easiest way to teach or the most efficient way to teach sometimes? I suppose it's easy in a way, yes, because you know it's e you just correct the paper, they got it or they didn't get it. So with teaching engineering course, it's not like that, and it's not like that way in the real world. If we, if that's where we want kids to be inventing solutions, that's really what we need kids to be doing in today's society, right? Um, inventing new things, new solution technology is changing so fast. So even if we thought there was one right answer, there really it wouldn't be in two years. It, it wouldn't be so. So. Because technology really, is changing mm -hmm. so quickly. So with either the burglar or the bebot or various other challenges, mm -hmm. can those smaller projects be then extrapolated into something that they can think about as they age or as they continue their engineering track? Mm -hmm. And also I think it teaches them the engineering design process. So they know, okay, I really have to understand the problem. Okay, I have to then uh, come up with possible solutions with my partner or with my team. I'll have to prototype a solution and then test it and redesign. So that's part of the engineering process. And then the final stage is they share out their um, solution. 
You've written a book called Elementary Engineering, Sustaining the Natural Engineering Instincts of Children. And I love that title because if you think about it, kids are always building, always playing. But that instinct, is it something that we train out of kids or not nurture enough? What do you think? Right. So if you go to a preschool, um, you'll see a lot of things that nurture this natural design instincts of children. You'll see a sand tables, water tables, blocks, right? And then that hopefully will continue into kindergarten where there's still this opportunity to play, to create, to design. But really in first grade and a lot of first grade classrooms, we really take all that stuff out and you know have kids sitting in chairs you know filling out work papers etc so with, when they get to high school they're like we're, we're asking well, well how come you don't want to be an engineer anymore so we haven't really sustained that um, design and is it process because we think that engineering is too complex a challenge for younger children to take on or because we're so focused on standardized tests what, what's well, behind that well i think that? both but traditionally engineering um, has been uh, you know you get to college and then you get to try it. Even in engineering education in colleges, uh, when I was an engineer, uh, engineering student, you studied a lot of math and physics, right? And then maybe at the senior year you got to do a project. So we people are trying in both in higher ed and now down to the elementary level and that comes through in the um, science standards and new science standards it's called NGSS. There is an, uh, this idea now that engineering is a good way to teach math, a good way to teach science in context. And you need that, yeah, you don't wait till the kids get into the field. You have to start earlier. So, because it's a hands-on opportunity and something that they already enjoy, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, they're naturals at it. That's what they want to do. And so if you go to a classroom with these engineering challenges, kids are excited and the energy is there. Kids are very engaged, too. Yeah. I noticed that when you were getting your PhD, you researched developmental characteristics of mm -hmm. students. Um, when you were observing that process, what stood out to you? So I uh, kind of went in thinking there would be major differences by age or maybe by gender, but it turned out it wasn't really the case that the more successful designers, it was due to other factors. So some of these factors were their knowledge of how Legos interconnect, which we call structural knowledge of the, in that domain. It was knowledge of the engineering design process, knowledge of design principles. Um, and then some executive function or kind of cognitive skills, like cause, one was causal reasoning. So can kids predict what's going to happen if they change their design? Or when they're testing, can they infer what went wrong successfully? So if you're a parent or a guardian watching who has a kid in this age group, the pre-K through sixth grade, are there things that you would, or a thing that you would recommend to that parent or guardian to say, here's a way you can nurture this engineering light that's sort of glimmering inside of your kid? Well, it's things like Legos, uh, which of course a lot of kids do, but um, and you know, girls should also be encouraged to do this, I think. But any kind of building, blocks with the younger kids, um, craft, craft materials, I know, um, I was an electrical engineer and a lot of electrical engineers had the same uh, story when they were younger. Um, their closets were full of things that were taken apart, walkie talkies and radios <laughs> and so forth. And that was mine exactly. So Terrific. yeah, let kids take things apart and play and uh, let them break things too. Yeah. <laughs>